Hello out there, and welcome back to Outer Wilds. Uh, when you start this game up again, it appears that you end up just starting the day over, which introduces the sort of when you die, you time travel back mechanic that we ended up sort of skipping on accident, but I will, I'm sure I will die plenty of times so people get to see. But we've got some more stuff to explore on this planet before we do anything else. So let's, because I wanted to explore. This. Okay, all right. Ooh, ooh, ee, ee, ooh. Not my best landing, but I'm still learning. I forget to do that all the time. Okay, let's go. This was something I found on my first playthrough because you're kind of hinted at it a bunch. So I wanted to show this off really quickly before we head it out. There's more on this planet, I think. I might explore it, but I also might just start heading out into the galaxy ret large, the solar system ret large. Hey, oh, Hatchling. Thought you were taking that tin can of yours into space today. What you still doing here? Me, I saw something crash over the horizon and didn't like what I was seeing from the pictures my little scout was sending back. So I thought I'd come over in here and, and uh, hear myself and take a look. Is that a dark bramble seed? Think so? Never. It's nothing I've ever seen on Timber Hearth before. You're sure probably onto something there. Whatever it is, it puts down roots in a hurry. I don't like the look of that thing, Hatchling. That's a fact. Think I'll send Marl and Hal loose on it. Best to get rid of this mess sooner than rather than later. And no one can remove an unwanted plant faster than a tree keeper can. I'll have to get a look at what the inside of the seed first, though. Don't want to get send anybody to hack a potentially dangerous plant without a better idea what's lurking inside there. Tough can help me haul the old scout launcher over here. Obviously, the opening is too small for someone to fit inside. Anyway, I'm not going to be blindly stick my hands in anything that looks as unpleasant as those that seed does. It's a good way to lose an arm or two. To which I immediately tried to go stick my head and arm in there, and it does hurt. Um, I heard a cat meow. But this time, unlike last time, I actually know how to use my pods, at least one way to do that, so I can actually try and see what's in there. Real quick, the other thing that I noticed about this is that's one of the places the harmonica is coming from, and you can actually hear the harmonica coming from lots of different places in space. So that's interesting. But let's, let's try something new. Free flight checklist. Hack boost can be triggered. Separate button. Okay, so these are just things you can freeze time when one talking to others. Interesting. That seems important. Freeze time when reading ship log, freeze time when translating text. I'm just gonna leave it automatic for now. This is a first for me, so let's see what we got going on here. It's mostly plants and mist. Hello. Big angler fish with a, something in its heart. Rotate camera. What are you? All right, that's... Uh, that's our next mystery, I suppose. Do I see a fire over there? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's... That's where our harmonica must be coming from. Which means he's alive in there. So that'll be something to try and keep in mind as we head towards... the dark bramble whenever we get around to that. Wee. Is there 
anything else I really want to explore here on this planet first before we head off. I will head off to the same exact location I had on my previous attempt, which was I headed directly to... <laughs> I'm bad at this. So those are geysers. That's what those are. I'd be interested to shoot my signal down there, but a million things to do and not all the time in the world to do them. First and foremost of which has to be getting <coughs> more used to just general travel. That, that has to be the most important thing is just getting used to, wow. Getting used to flying around. This is, uh, so this is where, yep, that's what I was wondering. That is where we've already been, it looks like. Cool. All right. I'm gonna keep doing a kind of surface level exploration for now. I am not as much of a, a depths diver as some might be looking for details and such. What does this look like from the top-down view? Interesting. Alright, I think I am going to make a head for... So let's, let's, now that we're in space... Let's head for Adel Rock Moon. I'm gonna destroy my. Uh, there's no chance of me surviving. I am. I am lost. I am drifting. I've ceded all control. Oh, there's an autopilot. I didn't realize that. I need to actually learn how to control this thing, though, before I uh, rely entirely on that. I was doing better the first time I booted this up. Okay. So, Adel Rock. I think we've already sort of set our, our course on exploring and learning about our ancient predecessors. So let's focus on that first. This is a moon, so I believe I'm going to need my oxygen tank. So these are the ruins that were mentioned on our moon. I've looked at these before. This will be about just about the last thing I've already experienced. So this is something where you can grab this orb. And when you do it, but just by looking at it, it just goes wherever you look. And when you put into these... It points Can I send this into the sun? Oh no, it obeys gravity. Damn. That would have been funny. Um it allows you to track different celestial bodies, so this one tracks the sun. This one tracks one of the other planets. Still tracking the sun. Do you want to actually, like, lock on? Am I stupid? What is with this wind sound? That one seems to lock on to our little home planet. What was this? Oh, maybe it was directly behind the sun at that moment, which is what confused me. That seems possible, but the, the planet we're looking at 
is there it is perfectly lined up as all that should be that makes more sense and then there's this one where they spin wildly out of control and we're gonna read a little lore on that is that a little asteroid interesting gonna have to maybe head for that sometime soon um, we'll talk about what that seems to mean to me when we read these journals that are down here. And you get oxygen by standing near trees, which is, I'm sure, exactly how that works. Okay, wow, I've seen this ru ruin in other travelers' pictures, but seeing it for myself, it's really old, isn't it? Oh, wow, this is the coolest day of my life. Okay, um, time for some official notes. This is some kind of Nomai locator. It can point out the different planets, which is incredibly cool, by the way. But from what little I understand of the writing here, I think it was built to try and find something specific. I'm not sure I also was able to translate something about the South Pole of Brittle Hollow, so I'll fly there and see if I can learn more. Yep, just gonna have to go back in the old ship and take off. Totally safe. Mostly safe. Oh, stars above. And I want you to go in there and that's we've got some records to read between these two things uh wrong button translate coleus i was upstairs testing the eye signal locator it can hear and follow the signals from the sun giants deep and brittle hollow however hey, something strange is happening when the signal when I asked the eye signal locator to follow the eye's signal. The device indicator rotates wildly and never points in just one direction. Let's look at this one first, because it appears to be the first one on the curve. Thatch. This is a curious result. It's possible the eye has stopped calling out for its signal? Is that also Felix? Thatch. Felix. I see. I most likely calibrated the locator incorrectly. Privet, my apprentice, and I will make the adjustments and try again later. An update. Disappointingly, everything is all correctly calibrated after all. It saddens me to posit this, my friends. I, I believe this locator cannot detect the eye's signal. We would need to build a more sensitive device if we want to locate the eye of the universe. Then we will build it. Don't lose hope, Kasava. Our search for the eye is what brought our clan to this place. We won't give up so easily. So yeah, they're searching for the center of the universe? The eye of the universe. That sounds like the center to me, but not sure. Um, but what it also sounds like to me, so this is my first thought on hearing that, that it correctly tr can locate the other planets, but has trouble locating the, the eye my first thought is it's like a compass. It might be pointing at itself. It can't pick it up because it's right there. That's that's just sort of my first thought. Where should we build this new, more sophisticated locator be built? I misread that. It may need something to be larger than this eye signal locator is. A southern glacier on Brittle Hollow has ample available space. I could construct a new building to house the, improp the proposed locator. Yes, let's build there. I imagine our young friend Conoy would enjoy that immensely. He's always held a great interest in the eye, especially for a child born so long after the crash. I will begin construction in Brittle Hollow South Pole immediately then. Anona and those of us originally stranded on Ember Twin built a quantum moon locator there, but the heart of the sun made its construction challenging. I wouldn't recommend building on that planet. Heat, not the heart, the heat of the sun. Okay, so we've got a bunch of discussion of they're trying to find something, the eye of the universe, which sounds like maybe the center, but maybe not. And they can't from this, so they built on other part, parts of the planet as well. So let's go and explore the rest of this moon. I technically talked to the one other guy who's on here, but I don't even really remember what happened with that. So we're basically at the point where everything is new and fresh to me. Ow. So I'm just going to sort of meander on foot for now since I have plenty of oxygen and fuel. 
Hello. What are you? I mean, I know what you are. You're somebody else's crashed pod. Can I do anything with you is more to the point. Doesn't seem like it. Interesting, though. Okay. Let's head towards the other pole of this planet just to see, of the moon here, just to see. It's very dark. This would probably be really scary for some people. Just walking on a dark moon with nothing but a flashlight. gas to try and jet all the way over there. Alright. Hiya! Hiya! Ah! Ah! Esker's signal scope log. X. There we go. Day 48. Still not picking up Rybex banjo from Biddle Hollow. Pretty sure they're fine, but I feel better once I can hear their music. Day 51, listen to Chert play for a while today. Unrelated, someone should tell Porphy and Gossam their flirting is not subtle from an aerial perspective. Banjo music coming in loud and clear today. Sounds like Rybik doing okay. That oaf I was worried. Today I thought I heard something strange. I don't know, it was probably nothing. No, it's back again today too. Something strange coming from the Timber Hearth. Okay, now I know this is crazy, but sound from Timber Hearth sounds exactly like Feldspar's harmonica. But Feldspar disappeared into space ages ago. It can't be them. It's still here. This is creepy. Maybe my signal scope's broken. I better talk to Ness. Ness! I don't think that's how that's supposed to be pronounced, but Ness! Sheik! Uh, whoa, whoa. I don't think that's how gravity works. I think, I think gravity is weird. Okay, that was scary. Yeah. Recording. Chert research notes, property of chert. This is an old crater. The neat thing here is the composition of the samples I took from the impact site matches the composition of the ice outskirts of Dark Bramble. I'd posit that Alrock was hit with a piece of planet that used to be where Dark Bramble now lies. Follow up on maybe there are more fragments the old planet Dark Bramble destroyed on the other astral bodies in the solar system. Maybe those are also the cause of ghost matter. We saw crystals cause ghost matter earlier. I mean, obviously this one doesn't seem as spooky, but... In spooky in that it's not immediately murdering me, but interesting. Okay, gotta get out of here. Down, down. Don't, don't float off forever into space. That'd be bad. Yeah, three minutes oxygen remaining. I was just noticing that my oxygen was running a little low. Thank you for warning me. Start heading back for the ship. While meandering a little bit. A lot of atmospheric storytelling, I'm, I'm guessing. I mean, definitely a lot of journals and logs, too, but... Okay. Let's refill everything. Turn the suit. And let's do some aerial surveillance of the planet. Of the moon. Moon! talk to our our dude or do down there and also take a look at the flag 
Sounds really fun. I would visit the flag on our moon if I could, so... Let's make sure and do it here. Did that refill my... I knew it refills my oxygen. Did it refill my fuel? Not really. Oh, you can just prepare and refuel there. Does that have, like, a cooldown or anything? Probably not. Doesn't seem like it's a survival game per se. I do not know how they built... They built... Yes, they built trees on the moon. Roast marshmallow. Is there a way not to catch these on fire? No. Whatever. Hello. Oh, hey, it's you. Ground control didn't tell me you were land you were launching. Long time no see. I didn't see who this was, so I'm not sure if this was Esker was Esker the one I was doing the log voice for? I'm going to assume it was, even though I'm stupid. Uh don't the other travelers come by? The lunar outpost saw more traffic back when our ships were less sophisticated and needed more frequent repairs. Nowadays, it's mostly used to keep a set of eyes on things. Sometimes Chert comes by and say hi, but Gabro is Gabro, and you know how Ryback feels about unnecessary space flights. Don't go, I mean, anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, seems lonely up here. A little, I'm in touch with ground control, Hornsfells, and Gossam mostly, and they radio up to chat now and then. And when ground control forgets I'm up here, and they usually do, I launch my little scout at the village. You spy on us? What? No, it's not spying. It's, it's one-way communication. None of the villagers know about it. Because I've never told them. Is that you whistling? Probably, or actually, definitely. The other travelers carry instruments so they don't bother whistling. You can pick up their music with the signal scope, though. Best way to spot that is the North Pole the Great Reception. The North Pole's marked in red on your mini-map. The Attle Rock's a pretty small moon. Just go north. You can't miss it. What is this place? Ah, very funny. Oh, Star Book, you're serious, aren't you? That's just depressing. <sighs> Welcome to the Lunar Outpost, which apparently the space program doesn't bother to teach about anymore. When we first started Wild or Wilds, travelers used to bring their ships here all the time for repairs. Our spacefaring technology has improved since loads since then. The older ships tended to uh, fall apart a lot. Like, more than they do now. Using the old outpost to cut down on the number of launches, landings taking place in the village, and also the number of fires. Nowadays, it's mostly just me up here raising saplings from timber hearth and keeping an eye on things. Well, bye, crazy lonely person. Uh. 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 Hello? That's a first for me, and now we get to see what the respawn animation looks like. Did I do something wrong, or does the universe just explode after a while? That wasn't that long. So that's, I wonder if that's connected to... I said this in my very first episode, but I didn't get a chance to record to, to upload it. We always wake up on that thing firing out of that satellite, which makes it seem like that's probably really important if they would choose to focus on it the first time you start every single game. That's just some, some literary intuition. A uh, little, little advice to anyone who's interested in narrative and design. The first thing that happens in your story and the last thing that happens in your story whether it's a video game, a novel, whatever those are the two most important parts of story they are, you, you, people don't have to understand why they're important immediately but it should always be something really important to establish the themes, tones, meaning any of that kind of stuff what on 
Earth? Oh, was that the, like, orbiting signal thing? Okay. Um, so I'm assuming that since that's the first shot you always ever get, that it's probably really important to understanding the overall story. Um, so yeah, obviously I should be like, what the hell was that mystery thing that just happened? And I am, trust me. But like, I kind of don't know what to do about that right now, so I'm gonna just explore. <laughs> Assume that I... We'll, we'll see if it happens constantly or not. That will make this uh, a part of that. So these are the, the two planets that are, like, sort of orbiting each other. I wanted to... Since I was already here anyway... Oh god, I got too close to the sun! Ah! That was a quick one. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again without flying directly into the sun this time. I don't know why I didn't expect gravity to take hold. I should have. This game is mostly space realistic. So I don't know why I wasn't like automatically assuming that like, of course it would be fine. So there's our that was fired. That seems like that's going way too fast for me to catch up with right now. Can I find the satellite? I thought it was this that was near the sun. I don't know if I can survive getting that close to the sun. That's what I was trying to find before was what's that little thing rotating the sun and I don't think I can do that yet. Maybe ever. Let's try not immediately get sucked into the sun this time. I always thought it was one around this green planet. So let's see if it's over there and I'm mistaking something else that's around the sun. Because that looks like it. Giants deep. Engage autopilot. Firing retro rockets. All right. Yeah, that's got to be the thing that's firing whatever that blue bolt is. So let's let's see if we can land on that, or at least take a closer look at it. I'm dead. Goodbye. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, it's very stormy. swing at this. Okay. Bad at controls. Bad at controls. It's coming around the planet again. It's orbiting pretty quick. So let's see if we can intercept it rather than just try and catch it. Like a, can you land on that theoretically? It looks like maybe at that part where there's the, the blue energy you can land on it. I'm not capable of that yet, so we'll, we'll just do more normal exploring. Ah! Before that. So let's unlock on on anything. Let's just see if we can just land on 
some nice. Ow, ooh, that's not good. That's real bad. Man? That's man. Not maybe the best spot to land. Let's see if we can land a little less out of the water. And see if we can repair this before it explodes, because that also happened in my first run. That looks like it repaired everything. That storm is moving my ship on the ground. Oh, this is a bad place. Why am I- why did I choose to come here? Did the whole- I just run up into the sky? I'm drowning? Oh god. Oh. Oh, and that looks like there's a bunch of ghost matter there. Is my spacesuit designed for pressure? It they aren't usually. You aren't usually either designed for pressure or no pressure. You aren't usually designed for Yeah. That deadly. So we can't go through there. I saw smoke coming from here though, so I would have thought it was somebody's camp. But I can't imagine someone would want to stay here if you fucking get suck someone's here. Wow, this is a very stupid place you chose to live. Mix. Let's return this, put this away, and talk to Gavro, who is Gavro, I understand. Nice to meet you. Good to see you made it here in one piece. First solo launch is a doozy, isn't it? So hey, don't freak out or anything, but lately I keep like dying repeatedly. I don't know, it's pretty weird. What about you? Have you died lately or is it just me? No, it's just me too. We're in a time loop. Time has been behaving unusually lately. Yeah, time loop makes sense. Cool. What do you think it was? And I figured it would be some kind of fidgety time business, but I wasn't really thinking about what's happening to the shape of time, you know? But a loop makes sense here. Let's go with loop for now. Looks like you and I are the only ones who can tell that time's gone all weird. I tried radioing Cornfells and asking if they died too, but they thought I was being metaphorical. Even if I tell Hornfells about the time loop, they all never they never remember by the next one. They don't realize anything different. Here's another weird one for you. Every time I die, all of my memories from that loop replay back to me. I'm pretty sure that's related to this big stone Nomai statue I found on the back of the other one of the islands. When I was looking at it and the statue opened its eyes and started glowing. It replaced my memories, replayed my memories like it's seen them through my own eyes. Like, just like what happens every time I die. That's what happened to me at the statue at the museum. You too, huh? And the know my statues must have something to do with why we're the ones who are aware of the time. It's no glowing statue, no loop awareness. I think that's going to be my leading theory, but... Yeah, these islands move. What the? There's something blue over there. But if you find out anything new about the statues or the time loop, let me know, okay? I'll be here. Maybe that satellite's in geosynchronous, and that's where it is above? I mean, that's what's new with me, but hey, your first solo voyage, kind of. Let's talk about, you know, you. How's space treating you? I found something. Nice. What you got for me? Actually, nothing. Uh, what are we doing out here? Well, what are any of us doing here, really? Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm exploring our solar system, same as you. But I tell you what, outer space really kind of gives you room to think. It's quiet and peaceful out there. I mean, it usually peaceful and quiet. Sometimes the cyclone comes by and lifts my little island paradise clean out of the water, then less peaceful. I noticed. It was terrifying. Where should I explore on Giant's Deep? Here's something you might like. At the start of every time loop, I keep seeing a bright flash in the sky, something that must keep happening up there in orbit around the planet. What else? What else? Have you been to the Statue Island? That's what I've been calling it, seeing as it's the island where I found the glowing Nomai statue. Get it? I was on the beach where the statue when the whole galaxy glowy business happened, by the way. It's a nice beach for that kind of thing. I give it a 7 out of 10 on the Gabbro relaxation scale. If you like checking out Statue Island with your own two, 
but it's the only one with two islands connected by an actual rock arch. Well, mostly connected anyway. You'll, you'll see. What's up with this planet? <laughs> I know, right? Oh, you mean, like, tell you about it. I gotcha. Well, Giant's Deep is massive, mostly water. No surprise there. A strong current always beneath the surface prevents anything from sinking below it. Seriously, I tried everything I could think of to get past the current, and no other idea worked. As for land passes, I've counted four islands, including this one. There's also that one with an Omai statue on the beach. I've seen the, you've seen the cyclones? Yeah, they're hard to miss. They toss everything up in the path, including well, islands included. Little tip, if you get picked up, try and land in water. Less likely to kill you. Where's your ship? That's a good question. It's definitely on the planet somewhere. I mean, unless the cyclone came by and tossed into space, I guess. <laughs> That'd be pretty nuts. Hope it's lonely. I hope it's not lonely. Cool. That was both extremely enlightening and totally nothing. Well, I'm gonna die. Goodbye, everyone! Hi, satellite! high here for that to work. We're just gonna have to try and run around that before I get launched into space again. Because I do want to see what's at the top of this thing. I want to see the fire that seems to burn even in space. So yeah, it definitely has to do with that satellite and whatever it's firing. That's going to be really important. It's probably what's causing the big explosion, what end me, but we'll have to see. Try and figure that out here real quick before I go explore more, because I'm sure I, I'm sure there has to be more I need to learn before I can just know everything. Yeah, this is just a camp what seems to survive everything. Nuts. Ow. Didn't slow myself down enough to not get hurt there. Let's let's go heal and explore this place a little more before we inevitably kerplode. space while our glass is broken because that would be very fatal. Let's see if I can find any other islands before we die. Okay, so that's is that our kind of connected by a stone arch? Is that a statue island? Ow! Pod float. It seems like the pod float. If the pod float, I can head out and repair it. Nope, the pod do not seem to float actually. Settle, settle. Whoa. Crazy. Yep. Yep. Repair before it explodes. Nope. This is a real predicament. Yes, I 
I'm, I know that the ship hull is breached. I know that the ship is in very bad shape. I would love to do something about it. I don't think I'm going to be able to based on the fact that that is hanging from there and not with the rest of the ship. Oh my god. The gravity was rotating. That's why that was so hard to navigate in. That and I'm bad at this game. Hello. Four minutes, eight seconds ago, long-range probe successfully launched from orbital probe cannon. Oh, does that track how long into a... Yeah, that tracks how long into a, round, a circle we are. Okay. Cool. I still have no idea what these are telling me, but it's neat that there's horrible eyes gazing upon me always. Kind of love crafting. You can put you in over here then. I have bad news, Avans. Yarrow says there was a problem with the proposed power source, the orbital power rope cannon that won't ask won't be asked to fire. I hope you're pulling your pulling my locomotive limb here, Cassava. I wish I were, my friend, but no. They are they aren't certain they can fix the problem, so the orbital probe cam is on a definite indefinite hiatus. Tell Privet and Mallow they should return there from the cannon. My spouse and I will remain at the construction yard for now. An update. Mallow and I will join you. As Privet left to visit her brother. She fears idea idea may feel responsible. So they couldn't get that probe thing. Hi ship. I think this means I'm dead. I'm guessing I cannot repair it in this state. No, it does not look like I can fix it. So, might as well die, I suppose. Gotta get around on one of these weird gravity rings again. Let's do as much exploring as we can, even without our ship, before we die. Getting better at the flight stuff, though. Those are remains. Let's see what they left behind. This is it. We finished building the final orbital probe cannon module and are ready to send it into orbit and around giant feet for assembly. Our next step will be to send Privet up to the orbital probe cannon and install the probe tracking system. To all my friends here at Construction Yard, my gratitude for your tireless work. I had given up hope, but I truly believe this cannon may actually succeed where other attempts have not. Are you going to are you going gelatinous on us, love? I'm delighted by your words, but they're atypical for you. If I'm ever half as gooey as Mallow and Evan have been to get, behave together, Jazz, you may launch me from the orbital probe cannon. If I know my brother Avans and his spouse will not want, Avans and his spouse will not want, will want to launch the probe with as much power as possible. I'm worried the cannon would break under the strain. I propose we give Avans and Mallow a slightly lower maximum power setting than the absolute maximum possible to create room for their enthusiasm. Is that what they, is that this thing? Is this the probe cannon? That would make the most sense, which is our space thing that I was trying to make contact with. It just seems like I would just hit my head, but I'm curious. And there's this thing. Do you launch me into space? No, you push down. You don't let me jump at all. Interesting. Yeah, that pushes down really hard. Huh, that wasn't what I was expecting. Okay. Let's 
For lack of any better idea, let's just wait here and see what happens if the cyclone grabs us again before the universe explodes. in the tutorial, I forgot about weird gravity in the tutorial. Sure mucked with my flight plan. There's another one of those tornado things here, so I can see if that does anything. Let's see, what does this one show me? Oh! Oh! That is that? No. Yeah, I sure wish I knew what those were. so you can get some more written lore, which I am better at understanding. Kanoi, Dia, Daz, and I are lifting the orbital probe cannon components into the orbit for assembly, and one somehow sank down beneath the current. Sava convinced me it's not to try... Convinced me not to try to write... Can I clean off my... Recre recreate the phenomenon myself using the other cannon parts, but we're very curious about what happened. How could something pass through the current? My gratitude for your interesting question. This is exciting. Spire constructed a metal, a model of the giant's deep here at Brittle Hollow Southern Observatory, and it reveals how an object might sink below the current. Kanoi, I'm unable to grasp the answer by looking through the projection pool. If I visit the observatory, would you kindly explain? If you don't mind the trek beneath the surface of the South Pole, I'd be delighted to see you. There are two trailheads, one at Brittle Hollow Gravity Cannon and the other at Tower of Quantum Knowledge. Okay, so I wonder if this is the picture that he was trying to look at and couldn't figure it out from. Kanoi, you should have seen it. We thought it was impossible for any cannon components to sink even partially below the current. But ours sank straight to the core. Within mysteries. Okay, so we know where to head to try and learn more. I don't think we have long until we die. I think it was like about 20 minutes. But yeah, and there's like nine left. So let's let's see. That's that's something we can learn here. When does Kerplosion happen? Then we can end the episode. 20 minutes and two seconds. Maybe it was more like 30 minutes, and I don't want to wait 10 minutes on this little rock. Protec. That's fun. Okay, well, it's more than 
20 minutes. Rather than just chilling here doing nothing, I'm probably going to end the episode there and we'll just have to explore whatever new things we can next time when I actually have a ship that isn't perploded. But we learned a lot this go around. I do wonder if the cannon is right above here. me without my ship, or being any good at flying my ship. Alright. Oh, that seems to be time. Ooh, hello. I found the rest of my ship. Just in time for darkness to consume me. from there and start investigating again next time. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I hope I'm not doing too stupidly. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye!